Three seconds. Folks, how are you? We are back to the hit show, The Actress Cut. I'm your host, Hubert Guy. You can check it out every Wednesday, 5 p.m., MNN Channel 1993, Files Channel 37, or live streaming on MNN.org. I got another great guest in the house today. I got my man, Wild Boy Blamo, in the building. This is how we doing it. Another great young cat right here into fashion and the acting and the modeling. You know what I'm saying? I met him down at the uh, New York City Live Fashion Showcase a couple weeks ago. Hit him up, told him to come down be on the show. Here yeah. he is. I'm right here. Baby. Here he is. We're right going to make it happen. He's going to tell us about, you know, the stuff that he's got going on, you know, what he looks forward to doing and, you know, introduce himself to you. So with no further ado, my man, go ahead and introduce yourself to the viewing audience. Thanks for having me. My name is George Blamo, also known as Wild Boy Blamo. Um, I'm an actor, model, and fitness professional here in New York City, uh, and hopefully moving to L.A. soon. Trying to make the L.A. move, huh? I have to, you know? Like, <laughs> um, in terms of acting, it's like a little like stagnant here, mm -hmm. um, especially like if you're not like really, really into deep, deep, deep in the industry. Mm -hmm. um, so I was just, I'm trying to go for the grand slam, you know? Trying to make it happen. Yeah. I yeah. had a, I had a, a homegirl that just moved out to uh, LA and she's been doing, she's been doing all right out there. Got her a few little auditions, you know, doing her fitness and so forth. What's up, Tiffany Handy? So she's, you know, she's doing her thing, you know what I'm saying? You so, know, like yeah. what I see, it's like, um, New Yorkers like really do well out there because it's like you're here, you're always hustling. You mm -hmm. have to like go from one audition to the next, but it's like you're hungry. Mm -hmm. Like everything in Cali, everyone's more laid back, mm -hmm. relaxed. Like we we're here now. I, I gotta come, come right. go and get this. <laughs> and right. If you take that philosophy over there, you'll succeed. Yeah, yeah. Because you definitely have to, you know, be hungry here in New York City and be on top of your game because everybody is trying to do it here you know and, and and it's like like you said it's non-stop and the competition here is ruthless so you really have to be in your game so if you go somewhere like you're saying a little bit more laid back like a la some i heard a lot of a few people were even going down to atlanta too and take that hustler's mentality down there which you just on it all the time yeah things work out yeah. things work out where are you from originally so i grew up in south orange new jersey okay um Hometown of Lauren Hill, mm -hmm. Solange, also known as SZA. Um, but yeah, and Rotimi mm -hmm. grew up in that town. So we, I come from an area that's very talented. I cut him a few times. Yeah, Rotimi, he's a great yeah, guy. On, he's a great uh, guy. on Power. Yeah, 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 yep, yeah. yeah. Yep, I cut him a few times on Power. Shout out to Rotimi. That's my main yeah. man right there. You know what I'm saying? That's a big cousin right there. Yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's where you're from, huh? Yeah. So um, how did you get started in the in the acting and in the fashion and the modeling? So like I've always been into that type of stuff, but I couldn't really do it because I I was an athlete. So I played baseball my whole life, um, soccer, basketball. Played baseball at Penn State. Um, so I actually got an injury um, my sophomore year, and so I was forced. I couldn't play baseball anymore. So my boy was actually. Uh, film director mm -hmm. so he was just like yo like you're a clown just come do mm -hmm. this <laughs> one two three and I started doing them like yo this is fun you right. know what I mean like right. I'm like maybe this is what God wanted for me mm -hmm. so I just started doing that at the same time my boys started their clothing line I started modeling for them there and then honestly you just took off from there right yeah that's how things back. happen right yeah <laughs> that's how I, things happen I haven't looked back since sometimes we think that you know uh, we encounter a situation we may think that it's over the world is just falling down on us But that situation can lead to another situation Exactly. There's so many mm. things that people have gotten into from you know uh, Being in a bad situation learning from that and then growing or not even like l Not not what I want to say is not learning from a bad situation I mean you do learn from a bad situation, but sometimes we get in situations that we have no control over exactly that we have no control over that's what I'm trying to say and when things like that happen, like you said, you know, another door opens. You got to say, in that time, I think that's the most important time when you got to think positive and keep your mind open. Yes. Because that's yes. what happens. If you get, start to get down on yourself, you know what I'm saying, you're not going to be thinking. You're not going to have that energy, you know, to really think about doing anything else because you're going to be down on yourself. But if you think, okay, this has happened for a reason. Okay, what's my next move? What's my next step? Then you wind up here on the actor's cut. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Exactly, exactly. You wind up here on the exactly. actor's cut. Starring. And it's it's just like <laughs> it's perspective, you know? Um 
at the time, I'm not going to lie, like, I actually had to take a semester off of school. Like, not, like, during, like, I was in school still, but, like, my grades weren't, <laughs> like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And, like, my academic advisor was like, yo, like, what's good with you? Like, this is, this doesn't make sense, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, so I actually went and spoke with a therapist, um, and I just got back on track, mm -hmm. and, you know, like, I just kept going. Um with acting and acting really just made me a happier person mm -hmm. and it's the same thing like you go on auditions like 20 times a week right um not a week but a month i go on 20 auditions a month about right about i'm getting told probably 18 times mm -hmm. but those two times that i do get the yeses they're big yeah mm -hmm. and they're good you know what i mean mm -hmm. so you gotta be willing to fail if you don't fail there's no success right. and you wouldn't like value it you right. know what i'm saying right each each experience is unique within itself, yeah. and it just helps you to get to that point. And like I said, all you need is that that one part, just one, that one just opportunity one. to, man, make it to the stars. So, when you were coming up, and w when you got into acting, because obviously you got into it when you were a little bit older, like early early teens, twenties, uh, uh, nineteen, 20s, 19 yeah. about. Yeah. So who who did you like? Like once you got in, like I know once I really started getting serious, I started viewing people differently, how they were acting, and you know what I'm saying, looking at people different. Who were some of the actors that you were watching and trying to implement to uh, perfect your craft better? So like I said, I've always wanted to do this. So it's like, I want to say since I was like five, I always knew I should have been acting, but mm -hmm. my mom is just an old school Portuguese woman. <laughs> <laughs> Edu <laughs> education, education, education. <laughs> so like, you know, I just did my education, just did my sports, but growing up, honestly, like, Martin was definitely, Martin Lawrence was definitely my favorite actor, mm -hmm. at least. Um, he was Martin. comical, but at the same time, he could also act a dramatic scene. Uh -huh. And honestly, I think that's good and versatile, the Jamie Foxx show. Um, and then Donald Glover, watching all those old movies with him. Um, those are basically like my staples growing up. Um, now, I'd say like Tom Hardy. I really like him. Tom Hardy's great. Oh, he's a, he's a. Oof. Ooh, he killed it in the Revenant. That man, that man is a monster. <laughs> he slept, I think he slept on a little bit. But he, like, he is. Not um, a little bit. A lot. A lot. Yeah, you're right. A lot. A lot. Um, Tom Hanks, um, obviously Denzel. Um, but uh, another person that I think I like a lot that doesn't get a lot of recognition is uh Don Cheetah. Mm -hmm. He's really, he's been, really he, good. He's done a he's lot good. of work. Yeah. You know, for years, like, he, and he's been consistent. And he's got some great roles. And now he's landed these the role in the in the Avengers. Man, that's just. Man, and that's just, he has he's on House of Lies too on Showtime. Yeah. So like he's on he's on like he's on a yeah. lot of different things. He's like, oh, you didn't even realize he's in it. Right. Well, like, that's kind of how I want my career to go. Um, I don't really care about fame. I'm just doing it for the craft, the love of the craft. So I just, if I was to follow a route, I'd probably follow the way he's doing mm -hmm. it. And and the money is still going to come, and you'll be happy yeah. because you, you, you're still working. Yeah. Cheetah works all the time. All the time. Been working forever. You know what I'm saying? I think my favorite, one of my favorite roles from him was when he, you remember the movie Crash Oof. with Lorenz Tay and... And Terrence Howard. That, yeah, and that movie, that movie, that movie. Sandy is... Newton. Oh my! That that's probably one of the like top top ten movies ever. To me, it's like, like that movie just has substance. You know yeah, what I mean? Um, yeah. And I just love, especially at that time when it came out. Um, I didn't know all the racism things that were going down in L.A. Because you like, you know what I mean? Like when you're young, you 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 hear about it but you don't really know you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying like now i know it's like mm -hmm. i'm reading I'm like oh that's messed up or whatnot but like um i was really happy it shed a light on like the situation mm -hmm. that was going on over there so yeah that was a deep film that was very very if you film. haven't seen crash you should watch crash definitely order it on demand youtube it whatever you need to do because and i think a lot of people now should Might really watch netflix. that movie right now I think it's on netflix is it on netflix I think so don't quote me on it, but I think it's on Netflix, honestly. Hey, check it out. Check it out. That's one of those movies that I think that a lot of people need to watch now because it's so much racial tension, but then in a way, with everything that's been going on with our leadership in our country, it's brought a lot of people together. Together, yes, yes, You know what I'm saying? Yes, yes. You know, we, I will, uh, we've I will got past a, past a lot of those 
uh, uh, racial stereotypes and so forth because we see that we all have a common enemy. <laughs> we yeah. all have a common enemy, you know? So, uh, That's why uh, Black Panther is doing so well Oh, right my now. God. It's perfect timing. Perfect timing. Perfect timing. You break down all those racial stereotypes and bring people together. I, I a, a fr you know, and we, of course, black people, we showed out in droves and still are, and so did everybody else. Dude, it was theaters that was just packed with nothing but white people and Asians, especially like every, like every, like, I love everybody being together. Like the unity, the energy, that's what we need more of that because if we continue to keep building and getting this positive energy, it ain't gonna be nothing that anybody evil can do to it's us. Stop you. You know oh, what I'm saying? Yeah. Because Agreed. it's going to keep, you know, progressing and progressing and then it's going to even go over to their people. And they're going to be like, listen, man, our, our backs is up against the wall. We, 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 we can't do no more. Let the people live. It's culture, man. <laughs> and like, um, when you have a strong culture, people love culture. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, not, I'm not saying like some people don't have culture, right. but like, um, in terms of like African well, culture, well, well, some strong. people, some people don't to a certain. But you get, you so, get what I'm saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> I get what you're saying. Um, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, I'm just saying like African culture is very strong. Um, you know, and what I really liked um what the director touched on in that movie per se was how like African Americans should embrace. African culture as their own, even though they may not have strong ties to it, they st you still are. Everyone's mm -hmm. African. Let's just put it like that. Everyone is African. Pretty much. Life started on Africa, so yeah. like everyone's African per se. Right. Um, but I really liked how, like, in terms of the Black community, we're kind of more together now. Because I remember growing up, like, my dad was from Ghana, so like I used to, everyone would be like, "Oh, you African?" I'm like, "Yeah." Oh, you dirty? Uh like, you know what I mean? Oh, like. Now it's like everyone, like, if I was petty, I've seen you wearing a kente cloth. Oh, aren't you the one that was making fun of me? Dude? Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I'm not, I'm not going gonna, I'm not gonna to do that now. Now I'm happy we're all together. So, right. like, it's team everybody. Uh -huh. Team unity. That's team what it, unity. That's all it is. That's, that's what we need. So, what are some of the, so, so speaking on, staying on this topic still, on the segue, what are some of the things that you think that you would like to see change or that you would like to see different in the industry as far as uh, race, as far as, you know, how we're cast, as far as, you know, uh, just the over our overall being in the industry? Um, honestly, it's like, that's just a, it's a tough subject because it's like, you gotta think about everyone writes from what their sample size is. So, you know what I mean? Majority of writers are white. So what, what visions are they having? Mm -hmm. It's a white vision, you know what I'm saying? Like maybe they weren't like accustomed to seeing black people around their whole lives. So like, I get that it's like, you wanna keep it like realistic, mm -hmm. but now like, I think Black Panther has paved the way for black writers now to come out and be on a platform, mm -hmm. you know, not just write gang hood movies for us like you know like we are educated people we're not we're not all thugs right. we're not all drug dealers we're not all born in poverty we're not slaves right we're past that now right right, right. um time for that time, time for those, for those movie movies lines to, stop. to be done yeah. <laughs> right um so now here we're here we're we're past the depression mm -hmm. we're we're all working class people trying to uh progress in life so mm -hmm. now I think now we're going to have a bigger storyline mm -hmm. for us black people to just just be motivated. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I just want I just want like black writers to just show like how black people are inspired. You know what I mean? Like we're we're really strong people, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? We've been through so much. I want I want writers to sh uh, have actors show that light of how we get through adversity. You know what I'm saying? Um, and now we're here and then hopefully the next generation is easier and it's a it's an even uh, playing field for everybody. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, that's very important. I, I think I think that's pretty much what's going to happen because one of the things that I'm motivated by now too is there. There's a lot of black shows on TV now. Yeah, there is. Blackish, grownish, uh, insecure, uh, Luke Cage. I mean, we have and you know like the show This Is Us where I can't remember the guy, the black actor's guy's name in that, but. That's a big show. He's one of the main characters on that. We are really like, 
getting yeah. being out there yeah. now. You know what I'm saying? Like, and and it's and it's not like the the drug movies and the thug movies and stuff like that. But it's you know it's it's you know we have our comedy, but it's more like grownish. For instance, I think not grownish, blackish. I think blackish is one of the most well written shows on television right now, only because it keeps. It, it's 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 funny, of course, mm-hmm. but it hits on every issue. I mean, the subject matter is serious every every episode. And the comedy. Um, every so episode. I just lo- yeah, that's a great show. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I really love I it. I be watching it all the time, you know. And I I really liked when this new season started out, and they had the big musical, mm-hmm. you know, um, and just the different things that he touches on. How they were t- he was uh, touching on. Um, workplace racism, how they were touched on, you know, and even personal, like dealing with, you know, when when Bo, his wife on the show, you know, Tracy Ellis Ross, you know, was pregnant and Gorgeous, then going way. through all kinds of different stuff, you know what I'm saying? It touches on serious life issues, but still keeps fun. I, I, I would love to see more shows like that. And, and, and honestly, I, it's coming. Yeah. Um, I just feel like we just need to be patient. Um, it's coming. Yeah, it's definitely. Cause, coming. cause we're all out here because this is a a totally different generation right now, and everybody is really seeing what they can do and utilizing everything that we have, like all this technology. Everybody is making a show nowadays. You know, it's, yeah. it, you know, get your web series going, everything. You know, so I like you're right. You're right. It's coming, and it's you know we have it on a certain level now, but I think it's gonna be come so much more major within the, within the next couple of years too, as far as you know, having black shows and even having more black nominees for the Oscars and so forth. And I'm not really a fan of the Oscars. I'm so not going to lie to you. Well, I mean, I just... It's that'd, be some, it's, that'd be it's, some it's, people's it's, goals. Yeah, it, it is, but I'm, at the same time, it's like, look how long it took Leo to win an Oscar. You know, it's a little political. I get it. I understand it. Um, but I feel like it's more opinionated based yeah. than actual. Yeah. You know? Because, oh, uh, what... A famous di- was it Francis Ford Cop- I, I can't remember who it was, but just like recently, I would probably say maybe about, I'm going to guess, and don't get me wrong, about seven, maybe seven years ago, like a really big famous director who had movies out for years, like f- famous movies, big movies, finally won an Oscar for You're talking about best uh, director. What's his face from Birdman? It's right on the tip of it's, it's right on the tip of my tongue, and I'm uh, like, I'm like, how, how did he not I win any? Th- how the is Mex- this? You talking like, about the Mexican dude? No, no, no. Am I, I? I can't think of his name. I don't think he's Mexican though, man. He did because he he did a movie uh, uh, with Leonardo uh, DiCaprio. The Revenant. The, you talking about the director of the Revenant? What's his What's his name? Um. I can't remember who Damn. it was. But. I forgot his name. But we know what we're talking and, about. Yeah, we're talking about the same exact person. We're talking about the same exact person. Should, and you I know should, who we're talking I, about, I too. should know this. Everybody is out there. They're like, man, just say it. They're out there saying the answer right now. <laughs> just say it. <laughs> These, say the answer. Like, yo, are you, you guys serious right now? You guys should know this. Yeah, we're serious. I should, I'm sorry. I should, I should but look it, just, it up. But it just came up off of, you know, just thinking about, you know, different things. Because what you said touched off the Oscars. You know, it is, you know, a lot of people, you know, Years and years and years, you have some people that win it all the time, you know, five, six, seven Grammys, and then you have, you know, some people who really deserve one that never get one. We're going to get really mad right now. Get one. Uh-uh. I'm serious. We're going to be it, really mad. I feel like we're going to pull this up, and then you're just going to be like, Dude, no. it's like right on, the, it's right on the tip of our tongue. It's like ridiculous. I'm trying to figure out who it was, and I can't. See, this is the power of technology. Ain't technology crazy? I love it. I Man. love it. I love it. Sometimes I think, though, that technology has made people just a little slower because you got everything now. You can spell check on your phone. I, I want to see a lot of these people's handwriting nowadays that we've been doing a lot of this typing because penmanship was very big when I was growing up. Yeah. And now you're doing everything on computers and everything. Alejandro Gonzalez in a radio. Was that him? Yeah, it was him. All right. Because he had that... Uh, he had that movie Babel with uh, Kate Blanchett. And oh, that was and good. Brad Pitt. That, that was, was good. Really, that I, was really I actually good. just watched that the other day. Yeah, that was an extremely great movie. I actually just watched that the other day. Well, congratulations. Yeah. But, but uh, touching on what you said about technology, um, 
I also think technology takes away from conversations. So say I didn't know who that director was. Usually back in the day, you would call a person like you know knew the mm -hmm. answer. Yo, what's this? Oh, yo, thank you. And then you, now you're having that conversation with it. That's, mm -hmm. that's a way of catching up. Mm -hmm. Now that's done, mm -hmm. I feel like. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like back in my day, we actually wrote letters, like letters, mm -hmm. and it took a few days to get to you wherever you were. Now you can just email or whatever. Like it's totally like communi communi technology has enhanced communication, but it also has kind of shuttered it down as far as personal communication, you yes. know, between people. Impactful. You know, sometimes me and yes. my wife, we'd be sitting up in the house and we'd be on our phones. And I'd be like, babe, let's set our phones down. Like, what, is, what the heck are we on our phones for? We at home, you know what I'm saying? Let's chill, watch. It, it can get dangerous. It can get addictive. Pro you know cons. what I'm saying? Pros oh, and cons. So many pros and cons. You really have to be careful with that technology stuff, boy. Man, man. Let's talk about your fitness, though, because I'm in the fitness, too. I be in the gym eating weights every other day. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you get it to you? So, uh, obviously, from being an athlete. Yeah, I've been an athlete my whole life. Uh -huh. um, so, then I studied it. So, I, I got my degree in kinesiology from Penn State. And basically, um, I wanted, my mom wanted me to go extra school and to be like a chiropractor or something. But I just didn't want to go to another four years of school. Mm. Um, so, school can get. Yeah. So I came back home, um, I was working for IBM, doing like health incentive work, just making sure like their employees were like actually working out. Mm -hmm. um, hated it. <laughs> or, oh my goodness. Like sitting at a desk for like nine to five. I have ADD too, so like I was, I would always get up. I could like, not do that. And like, it's like snack, You there's so many like snack things. Like I was just like, yo, this is not my lifestyle. So I ended up going back to a gym that I used to intern with uh, called Williams Sports Training in Whippany, New Jersey. Um, the head trainer, Mark Williams, he like groomed me to who I am today in terms of like personal training and how to train people for strength and conditioning. Uh, he used to coach uh, Tim Howard. Oh, um, very nice. Yeah. Soccer, soccer yeah, goalie. goalie yeah, yeah, USA's goalie. So I got that philosophy from him and I just wanted like to be more, you know? Mm -hmm. So. I, I started going out on my own. Uh, I own my own company called Inner Fire Fitness. Uh, I just train people at their houses, mm -hmm. uh, group fitness. And then I also just teamed up with Handstand. Um, basically, it's a, we're Ubers mm -hmm. of personal trainers. So okay. you can just download the ha app Handstand. And if you want me to come, I come anywhere. Mm -hmm. So say like at the park, Central Park, meet me at Central Park. I'll just come, you pay the company, and I show up. Mm -hmm. And we're partnered with Reebok, so mm -hmm. through that, nice. through yeah. that, like I've been doing work with uh, Handstand and Reebok, and haven't looked back since, man. Just changing people's lives one person at a time. Very nice, man. I, I mean, I, I I love like being into fitness, man. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> Eating right, you know. And I'm not even gonna say I've been doing this my whole life. I've been relatively sl slim dude my whole life, mm -hmm. so I've never really had too many issues. But for, I would probably say like for the last year mm -hmm. I've really like been going hard in the gym man and you you see those results yeah you know what I'm saying yeah. you, you you see I can't wait for the summer I can't wait for the summer, summer Rawr. Rawr. Flicks. that t-shirt right there give it to me in a schmedium got to make sure these guns are showing <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You feel me now? Ew, <laughs> Gotta gonna make gonna sure they know the push-ups are working <laughs> uh, what I love about fitness is like that's the one thing in life you're allowed to be selfish on. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. If you in there, like, you pull in that work, you right. know what I mean? Then you start to see the, 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 right. the Texas coming in. <laughs> like, yo, you're like, yo, I'm, you can feel yourself because, yo, you, yeah. you put in that blood, sweat, and tears. Yeah. So you deserve, you know, yeah. to be. Yeah, that's what it's yourself. about. That's what it's yeah. about. I'd be like, you know, I might walk around and flash a gun in the mirror. Between reps. <laughs> I've checked a little bit, like. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> yo, that is hilarious. But yo. then your confidence. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just even the way you look at life. Like, if you were angry, instead of, like, stress. It's eating, therapeutic, man. Yeah, just go lift some weights. I guarantee you'll feel better. And you'll look at things differently. Yeah. Uh, and it calms you down. I be in the gym, man. I, I I got a I got a crazy workout on the bench, and then I do abs, and I be in the gym for like three hours, 
at least three hours every time I go. No, nah, you all, you 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 one of those three hour dudes. Let me bench. I then you take a picture. No. <laughs> 20, 20 minutes come, and then you on to the next one. <laughs> no. All right, so you were in there three hours putting in work. I'm in there putting right, in work because, I, there. because I, I got a serious rep set. Like, I, I'm not I'm not a big dude, but I bench like 110. Yeah. So I, I do, uh, like, this is whole one whole set for me. So I do five reps of that bench. Then I got my 25-pound barbells. I do 10 bicep curls. Then I got the 60-pound uh, dumbbell bar. I do two curls with that, but then I drop into five squats with that. Hey. Put that down. Okay. I got the 30-pound uh, barbell. I do 10 bicep curls with that. Then I got the 45-pound plate that I do five tricep pulls on each arm. And then I go over to the, to the back pulley, uh, 140 pounds. I do five Ooh. of those. And then after that, that's one set. That's one whole that's a, that's set for me. That's what we call circuit interval training. Yeah, at yeah. At its finest. Yeah, that's what I be doing. I love that. That's what I, I love be doing. That. So you're working. I do that you're eight working. times. Yeah. I do that eight times. Like, you know, and I try not to, you know, even though if, if I feel my body get, of course my body's getting a little tired, but I don't sit around for a long time. I might take like a minute, you know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. I don't want to get out of my, out of my. Pump. Uh, yeah. Pump. Yeah. Once the pump's in, you want to keep I it. I don't want to get out of it. And then I go over and hit my hit my abs, man, for another 45. I do so many different different ab things on that, man. You're right. I'll be walking out the gym like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you just put it. Like, think about it. Three hours. You just putting three hours of work to your body, right? Why not feel yourself? Right. I'm not saying be cocky in terms of other people. But like, yo. Right. Feel yourself. Be grateful that you just moved. Be that grateful much. and be great. Exactly. <laughs> yo, let me shout out my man Nehemiah Wallace over at Stephen Land. Yo, he be hooking me up with the fresh girl all the time. You see the cufflinks? The cufflinks is crazy on here. Butter shirt, butter boots. Yeah, you see those? Yeah, Stephen Land. When I first met you, that shirt you were wearing, uh, the, cutting the, my hair. The flower print. That's Stephen Land. Bro, Fire, right? I know. That's why I'm, I'm like, yo. <laughs> That shirt made me remember his name. I'm, I'm serious. <laughs> yeah. I'm serious. The gear is crazy. 17 West 125th Street. Yo, starting next month in April, every second and fourth Saturday, I'm going to be there from like 12 to 5, uh, doing complimentary haircuts, hot towel, Rachel Shades. We're mixing the superior quality men's grooming in with the men's high fashion. Yo, one more time before we run out, give me your information before we get up out of here. Wildboy underscore Blamo on Instagram. Just holler at me, man. Holla at him, get some checks in his pocket because he wants them and he deserves them. It's a good young man right here putting in that work. Oh, by the way, you know I'm Go Blue, right? Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, so he, he went, to, look at his face. He went to Penn State. I'm Go Blue. Anybody will know about that. Anyway, holla at your boy. You were guy. The actor's cut every Wednesday, 5 o'clock. Wild boy blammo. Handsome good groomy. <laughs> Peace. We are Penn State. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, and I bet that got on there right there, too. That's probably how the show ended. Yeah, right. We are Penn State. <laughs> <laughs> he was waiting for that one. <laughs> oh, man. Yo, when you said that, I was just like, yo, that's a, a natural reaction. I'm like, oh, you know I'm going blue. Hey, right. y'all just, ooh.